before we start our day, we have a story time from last night. So we came to Shargao having only booked a one-way flight to get in. We were anticipating that we would be able to sort out another one-way flight to get us back out to Manila so that we can then move on to our next country. Now, like booking one-way flights is a very typical thing that we do because obviously we're bouncing from place to place to place and we found that sometimes airlines drop their prices so it ends up actually being a cost-effective method. Meanwhile, we already had a flight booked to go from Manila out to our next country which had already been booked on points. So with that, then we decided to price watch for a couple of days in the hope that the cost of getting a flight out of Chargao back to Manila would drop in price because when we were looking, then it was looking pretty hefty at that particular point. And when you are backpacking around any country, I think it's very common to do last minute travel. And also by doing that, then that's how we ended up on this island in the first place. Mm -hmm. And we've been loving it here so far. Yeah, I mean, it was a girl we met in Caron, and she recommended Shargao to us, put it on the map, and then all the locals said, yeah, come here. So we were just following some advice, but now we're trapped on this island in paradise, kind of. So what has since developed with that is we had a look last night so that we could try and get ourselves from Chagall to Manila. However, when we took a look, then all, and I mean all flights on the date that we wanted to go had been sold out and or cancelled. And the earliest available flight on the day of us going from Manila to our next country because there was a little bit of leeway for a morning flight, had also been either sold out or cancelled, which obviously left us quite in the lurch. So we panic researched on Skyscanner, Booking.com, Google Flights, Expedia, and all of the partners that they link to for the best part of at least an hour playing with different day combinations, airline combinations, airports we could fly to in the Philippines to then get an onward flight to Manila. We got super creative to see if we could get a flight on one of the days we needed at an affordable-ish price at a decent time and nothing turned up. The only option that we had was to push everything back. I ended up getting on the phone with Aeroplan, although in the end I figured out how to do it online. So we delayed our flight from Manila to our next country by a day, which cost us 200 Canadian dollars. And we found a flight from Chargao to Manila the day before at a hefty price. Basically we paid close to $700 because we decided to try and wait out high prices and see if they would drop. This is one of, we're happy to say, very few snafus that we've had while we've been traveling so far when it's come to bookings, logistics, all of that kind of stuff. But you know, it's definitely a lesson learned and we can take something from this. I think that there clearly is an appropriate window in which one should be trying to book last minute. The other one would also be if you are going to come to the Philippines and you are planning on doing island hopping, make sure that you don't just do your research in terms of what you really want to see while you're here, but also do your research into how much it will actually cost to get between islands. While we have really enjoyed our time in Chagao so far, had we known just how costly it would be to get in and out of this island, then we may have actually put this one on the back burner and gone somewhere else instead. 100%. We came here instead of going to Boracay because we had so many local recommendations for Chargao and had heard that Boracay is very touristy, but I think because it is touristy, it is more affordable and easy to get in and out of, where Chargao, yes, it's famed for its surfing, but that's very niche. And I think that in general, Chargao is just more expensive to fly in and out of. And I think there are probably fewer flights in and out as well. If this is as 
bad as it's going to get, I think we should count ourselves lucky. But for today, what have we got planned? We are going to go to the beach and then we're going to go somewhere for a sunset as well. So let's crack on. We've made our way down to Duke Beach. It's like super close to our guest house. I think it was what, less than a 10 minute motorcycle ride. Yeah. This is an absolutely gorgeous place. Since we got here, it's just been amazing. We're just watching two dogs chase each other along the beach right now. Yep, and hoping they don't steal our shoes. We came here, we just parked up, walked through just a little clearing of trees, and then we just been treated to this. And the beach kind of goes in this 360 degree circle obviously if it's 360 degrees it would be a circle mm. it's not just a strip of beach it's a circle and in the middle there's all these palm trees and grass and as you said this is not the place where you would come to surf this is for lazing around on the beach having a nice relaxing swim the water is such a great temperature this is a pure leisure time beach yes there are tourists around but the majority here is locals mm -hmm. as well which is just fantastic to see and it's free mm -hmm. even better oh my goodness we're gonna this love this is a treat yes it great is. discovery We don't look like drowned rats because we went swimming. Instead of us going to the water, the water came to us instead and we got rained on. Yeah, the heavens opened. So we spent, what, maybe 40 minutes at the beach before we had to hop on our scooter and come back to our guest house. But it was a very nice 40 minutes of listening to my podcast. That's why I wish we had more time because we were both thoroughly enjoying it. So I think we're going to try again tomorrow. Most definitely. Good morning. As you saw yesterday, everything kind of got rained out despite our best plans. So let's try again today, shall we? I feel like we need a movie thing, you know, but... Take two. <laughs> You've heard of hot springs, but have you ever heard of a cold spring? Us neither, so we're here to check that out. We have just driven about 15, 20 minutes from our hotel. This whole island is just covered in palm trees, no matter where you go. So you're like on these winding roads, they're empty and you're just surrounded. The beauty here is inescapable. Now that we are at Bugat Cold Spring, entry is only 20 pesos per person. So we are gonna check this site out for one whole Canadian dollar. Let's go in. So we went there at high tide when you can't really see it, but basically when the tides go out, then there's kind of a rock wall that encloses a part of the river there. That then creates essentially just a nice cold pool where you can sit, swim and bathe. And all in all, that was really nice. We spent maybe 20 minutes in there just floating around and enjoying the surroundings. Not necessarily something you want to plan a day around because there's not really much else besides just taking a dip but for the time that we spent there and also for the purposes of going somewhere that is very unique then that was kind of cool yeah it was kind of like a mini version of meg papunko rock pools Among other things, Chagall is renowned for being a very popular surfing spot. And among the places that you can go surfing on this island, then this is probably the most popular. 
We have come to Cloud9 Boardwalk and this is a great spot to watch the surfers because we don't surf ourselves and it costs 100 pesos per person to get in which is about $2.50 Canadian. a really nice spot that you can come for sunrise or sunset and it was originally what we had intended to do last night before it got rained out but we didn't want to take the risk today and not come here hence why we're here in the middle of the day figured that since we paid 100 pesos per person to come to Cloud9, we might as well make use of their beach here since it's actually quite lovely. We have a really good view of where the beginners seem to be having their surfing lessons. So this should make for some really good people watching. And I think we're just going to listen to our audiobooks, podcasts, and have a bit of a relaxing afternoon. Sounds great. So we've made it back in time to escape the rain, thankfully. But I think of what we got to see prior to the heavens opening, then it was all just really nice. Yeah, I had a lovely day out. I really enjoyed going around on the back of the bike. Thanks for escorting me around, Jeeves. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and yeah, just seeing the natural beauty of this island. It really reminds me of Bohol. I think the inland beauty of the two of them is very similar and absolutely stunning and totally worth renting a bike so you have the freedom to explore wherever you want at your own pace. Absolutely. I think with a few places that we have rented bikes before, then there are certain kind of advisories where like, it's always a better idea to just kind of take it easy and make sure that you feel confident enough on the roads and stuff before you take this on. But I feel like certainly with this and with Bohol, then it's kind of relaxed enough. Like you don't feel like there's too much traffic, there's not too much pressure on you, and you can kind of just take the ride really at your own pace. So if you kind of wanted a gentle route into getting confident with a bike, then Maybe looking into the likes of Chagall and Bohol might be the way forward. But I feel like from the, was it five islands we've been to? Each of them has offered something a little bit different and we've gotten a taste of like different landscapes and got to try all kinds of amazing local Filipino food. We've seen islands, been on boats, gone to the beach. 
Actually, that's the other thing about here is that both beaches we visited, Duke Beach and the one at Cloud Nine, have been Amazing. really nice because none of them have been that crowded. No. And no one's charged you money for like a lounge or anything. There are tons of palm trees that have like shaded you and plenty of golden sand. So if you want to spray your towel out, then it's pretty comfortable to do so. And the water is nice and it's not rocky at either of those beaches. You yeah. can just walk right in. It's paradise, really. It's great. Yeah, we've really enjoyed our time in the Philippines. But I think probably one of the greatest things about being here is that this has really opened up opportunities to see so many truly unique things. Certainly in terms of seeing things like rock pools like we saw, a cold spring, going island hopping and being really up close with turtles, seeing sardine runs, all of that kind of thing. So unique. We've never seen anything quite like it. Nor have we gone canyoneering before, which was so much fun. Exactly. If you are really looking for somewhere that's going to give you a truly unique set of experiences in the same way, then you really do need to come here. The only downside I'd say to the Philippines is that getting between the islands isn't necessarily cheap. No. It can be, but it can also be super expensive. Whereas somewhere like Indonesia, you do get different experiences and unique experiences, but it's cheaper to get around. But I think all in all that wraps our time up here in the Philippines. We'll look ahead to another travel day starting tomorrow, at which point we'll be going into our next country. But until next time, take care. And keep smiling. <laughs>